What does it mean when your protective amulets break? And what, if anything, should you do about it? Well, on my lucky last day here in La Paz, Bolivia, after about a month of spending time with native healers and visiting sacred sites and so on, I have a little bit of a, a ghost story that might be illustrative for you in that direction. My name is Gordon White, and I convene the world's largest online magical training community at runesoup.com. In addition to which, I'm also a shamanic healer, which means whenever I travel, particularly when I do extended expeditions like this one in South America, I bring with me various shamanic accoutrements. Uh, and that's because I'm here doing ceremony. It's because I try to maintain a client schedule when I'm on the road most of the time. And so on this visit, as is normal, uh, I arrived in early March in a Paraguay and my beloved obsidian jaguar, my protective amulet, was broken. Uh, and this is the instantiation of Otorongo, who is the principal protective spirit uh, in my healing tradition. And so I tuned in, very disappointed because it was a gift amongst other things. So I tuned in, speaking to Otorongo, and she comes back with, Latam break, Latam break. And she was showing me her broken forearms and like neck. And I'm gonna flash up the image of the, uh, the broken talisman now. That did happen. And I did fly Latam. I flew Latam from Santiago to Chile to Asuncion, which is the capital of Paraguay. And all right, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, that's what happened. And that didn't feel right. It felt more like she was trying to tell me, and it's not like the spirit died, um, but like dying in the line of service. Like the, she broke so I didn't have to. All right. Uh, and then I hear back from my friends in Australia. There was a flight I was going to be on. I had two choices. Uh, there was a flight I was going to be on, a LATAM flight, that two thirds of the way between Sydney and Auckland on its way to Santiago de Chile, it just dropped out of the sky for 45 seconds. Now they're still doing the investigation on it, but it appears to be, I mean, it's a Boeing, so who knows, uh, but it appears to be some sort of pilot error to do with knocking a switch on a seat and pushing a pilot forward into the controls. Anyway, it plummeted for 45 seconds. It's two thirds of the way through the flight. No one's really wearing a seatbelt at this point. So people and flight attendants are hitting the roof or the ceiling of the cabin. And then as it corrected, come crashing down and breaking their arms and, and causing quite bad damage as they're hitting the armrests and, and so on. That was the flight I was going to be on. Okay, so that's a double ping. Uh, that's right. Uh, the implication there being that Otorongo intervened earlier on to prevent me from being on the flight where I would have had that damage. Because I'll tell you, I certainly would not be wearing, I would not have been wearing my seatbelt. I don't know about you, but that's... Uh, I might think twice about it now, but I definitely wouldn't have been on that flight. So uh, anyway, that was the final piece. And so I contacted my mother via WhatsApp back in Australia because she actually gifted me that, uh, that obsidian figurine Christmas of 2022. So two Christmases ago. Uh, and she's friends with the guy who owns the store. If you are familiar with Newcastle, Australia, it's called Why Not? Why Not Crystals? It's on Derby Street. The guy's name is Luca. Uh, he runs a good shop. <laughs> so if you're in the area, uh, swing by. Anyway, my mother bought this for me, let's say in November of 2022 as a Christmas gift, but she liked it. You know what it's like Christmas shopping? She wanted one for herself. So she talks to her friend Luca and he says, oh, cool, I'll order another one from Mexico. Uh, and I get my Christmas gift and it gets incorporated into my, you know, shamanic healing um, kit. And so it goes and so it goes and the statue doesn't show up and the statue doesn't show up and the statue doesn't show up. And so I'm messaging my mother and she's actually not in Australia at the time. She's in Fiji with my little brother on a family holiday. And I tell her the story about the Latam flight I was going to be on and what Otorongo said and how my, my beautiful little gift got broken. She gets a message from Luca. Her statue, her replacement statue has just come in from Mexico. Didn't think it would take, what is that, 14 months at random. And of all the time, <laughs> of all the time for the replacement statue to show up, it's immediately after it's died in the line of service. So I say to mother, because you kind of have to do these things, uh, 
Oh, well, uh, it did a really good job for me. Uh, I enjoy your protective amulet. And she says, and she says um, I think it's yours, which it is. So by the time I get back, uh, I will have a completed Mesa uh, spirit combination, I suppose, uh, again. So that's the first thing you want to look for when you encounter a broken protective amulet. For an animist, uh, the cosmos is actually made of meaning, which means it's not so much to brush it off as, oh, it doesn't mean anything. Well, if nothing means anything, what do you have a protective amulet for in the first place? That's dumb. Let's not go down that route. What you want to do is look for uh, external confirming factors. So if you have, uh, if you break a, a Bagua Feng Shui mirror that is designed to be deflecting negative forces, if something, if you notice it's cracked or if it suddenly falls off the wall, anything like that. So, okay, what else is going on in my life? That's the first thing. Look for the, the language of meaning, the language of symbol around it to see what's actually going on. The next step, and this is optional uh, because it may, mine was obvious, <laughs> all right? Uh, I just told you the story. Uh, it was very obvious. Uh, if it's less obvious, it's card time. These are my uh, Fortune's Fools uh, Lenormand cards. You can use whatever you want at that point. But what I like to do is, and when I teach uh, cartomancy, I call this omen logic. Uh, I get the cards. The, the question that you ask the cards is, tell me the story of this talismanic breakage. Uh, and that's the way you get the cards to answer the questions you don't know you need to ask right? Because uh, you might be being cursed. <laughs> uh, it happens. Uh, it might be an obligation to a spirit that you have neglected. It might be uh, it's time for a new one. Uh, but particularly if you've got different spirit uh, relationships or, or different patrons and so on, stuff can get moved around in your life to prepare you for things that you don't know are happening. But the best question to bring to the cards when you have a broken talismanic uh, device. We're talking about protection, but it's, it's really, that's the main one that you want to be concerned about because they will break uh, in the line of duty. And you just want to make sure like, did you break solving this <laughs> or do I need like a bigger one? Right. And that's where you want the question to, for the cards. Tell me the story of this talismanic breakage. And then the follow-up question, if it's not obvious, is has the protective task been accomplished? So tell me the story of the talismanic breakage and then has the protective task been accomplished? A final consideration with a broken protective talisman is disposal. Uh, and so funnily enough, I, I was in a, a position to be able to provide my Otorongo statue with a funeral or a send off at the birthplace of the sun itself on La Isla del Sol in the middle of Lake Titicaca because it was there for a sunrise ceremony and arrayed in front of the Roca Sagrada, the, the stone that the sun emerges from, are all these votive offerings. That's what you should do in every instance. Obviously, you should travel to Bolivia, to the La Isla del Sol, and leave your protective amulet where it can be reborn with the sun at the Roca Sagrada. Uh, not really, obviously. Um, this is going to depend on your emotional attachment to the object in question. If you've just purchased it because, and this is legitimate, I'm not, we're not competing here. <laughs> If you just purchased it because you needed some protection, there's not necessarily too much you need to do with it based on the, well, I'm basing that on the outcome of the cards being the protective task has been accomplished, at which point you can kind of get rid of it. I do like to dispose of objects that have had a sacred function in appropriate ways uh, that can be graveyards that you have relationships with that can be at crossroads. Uh, that can be th that sort of thing, right? Again, it will depend on the language that the talisman in question came out of. If you have a Buddhist protective amulet, leaving it in a Catholic graveyard is, well, is that littering? Um, it's not wrong, uh, but it's without knowing the rest of that story, perhaps not uh, the best thing to do. So that's the full sequence of events. When you encounter a broken protective talisman, investigate the story of the breakage, find out if the talisman has completed its protective task or you need to bump things up, in which case get in contact with someone who can potentially help you with that. 
Uh, and then it's a question of disposal, and that's following along and understanding the the symbol logic and the uh, and the uh, and the omen logic uh, that the particular talisman came from. And if you're looking to upskill in the area of protection, we have an entire course on protection and malefica in the RuneSuit Premium Members area. It's twelve dollars a month. You get access to all the courses, including tarot, including journeying, and including protection and malefica. Links are down below if you are so inclined.